This is me, Undead Viking, and this is Giga Robo. So when they, I was contacted by the designers of Giga Robo, uh, they they asked me uh, if I would be interested, and I was like, "Well, can you tell me something about Giga Robo?" And they said, uh, "It's giant monsters uh, beating the holy heck out of each other in the middle of a city, uh, ripping apart the city in the process." And I was like, "Hmm." Yes, I would like to take a look at Giga Robo, please. <laughs> so uh, they went ahead and sent it to me, and uh, because me and my friends are big fans of, of like the big giant robots uh, trashing each other type of uh, a game, uh, we took to it like fish to water, and we enjoyed ourselves a great deal. So uh, let me give you a good overview of the rules and how Giga Robo plays, and then we'll come back here and I'll tell you my final thoughts about why uh, we've been digging it. All right, cool. All right, this is Giga Robo, or better known as Giant Robots Beating Each Other Senseless in the Middle of a City. I like, that's a little bit of a lengthy name. So, regardless. Um, what you see in front of you is a prototype. Keep that in mind, but uh, the published version should look a lot like what you're seeing right in front of you. Now, I've just chosen to put the four robots out. Um, my robots actually got a little bit busted up uh, in the traveling to me, so and I, I wasn't able to really super glue them well, so I apologize for that. But you can see pictures of them on the web website and also the Kickstarter page and what have you, so you can definitely see uh, what the miniatures are going to look like better than what you see in front of you here. Uh, but I put all four of them out so I could kind of just have them out there, and this would be either a team game, which like two robots against two robots, or an, like a brawl for all kind of situation, if you will. Uh, you do actually, like when you roll the dice, whoever's like the first player, uh, they get to decide if they want to deploy first, and they also get to put uh, decide you know with where they're going to put the different buildings. You don't have to use all of the buildings that are out there. Uh, you can... Uh, use less, but if you're actually playing by strict tournament rules, like there have to be 15 buildings out, and that's what you see right in front of you. Now, as I said, this is a world where you're going to be like destroying everything, and including the other robots, and also these 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 buildings are going to come crashing to the ground as well because they're going to get attacked or robots are going to get slammed into them or robots are just going to smash through them to get to their enemies and things like that which makes this like kind of a really cool like living battle arena if you will which is something that i i really enjoyed about this game now just touching on a few quick rules before we actually kind of dive in a little bit i'm not going to go ahead and do like a blow by blow turn by turn battle here uh, but i'm hopefully going to give you a good overview uh, so just keep that in mind. There is a really, really good, uh, like, watch us play the game video on the Kickstarter page. So you can go check that out as well. But anyway, a couple quick rules about the game is that you, you, when you set up the game or when you start, each person is going to pick a robot, and they're going to pick a pilot. And then uh, you can divvy that up however you're going to do it. Um, I've already got like my player board down here. Uh, I'm not going to show you that one just because I have to move the camera around. But so each person gets to pick a... Um, a robot and your robot card is going to look like this uh, you're going to have you know the, the the name of the robot up here their max armor their speed their defense and so on and so forth and there's this little uh, grid here and you'll notice this grid here is for the armor and you're going to be moving uh, these red dots or whatever these red cubes uh, to show as your armor gets depleted and if you ever get you know run out of armor then your robot is destroyed and you're out of the game you um use one of these templates and then you use a pilot template as well. So you have a pilot and a, and a robot and you combine them like so. And so then you have uh, your fighting ability. Um, so the, the over here for like the pilot, you're gonna pick one pilot ability. I'll show you those cards here in just a little bit. And then they have their fighting spirit, um, which they is like kind of like their power that they're gonna use to activate their attacks and use the different cards that they have so they can uh, do battle with each other. And there was also some stats up here, like the max fighting spirit, that's a maximum that it can go to. Um, their heart, which is uh, how they generate either fighting spirit or they generate power tokens. More on that in just a little bit. And also their rage, which is uh, 
uh, whenever they take damage, um, your your pilot will rage because they're angry. And so, like, uh, when you're actually doing damage to people, you're actually giving them more options, which is something that's also really cool about the game. Now, you might notice that these these three bars there, that there's nothing there. You can see you can see right through it as far as the camera goes. And you'll notice down here, I've actually filled those bars with these little uh, cardboard tokens. Now, that those weren't the only ones. You get to pick which ones you want as your special abilities. Each one has one. And then, like, these little spots over here where you put power tokens that activate these, these different abilities. Uh, your power tokens, you can only ever have six ever. Power tokens have a lot of different abilities. Um, they activate the special things that are on uh, your board and the special uh, uh, things that you can do, like this one is uh, the detonator overload. While activated, if your melee attack card is successful, you may permanently remove it from the game to trigger that you may spend X power dice to add plus X damage uh, to this attack. So you can just basically do extra damage. So you put two power tokens there, but that actually counts towards the total of six that you're allowed to have. So, uh, and power tokens can actually be used to uh, use get more dice for different attacks and things like that. So whether or not you're gonna like activate it, like the ones I've picked here, and I, I'm gonna try to pick this up and show you. Actually, I'll just I'll just pick up the three powers, which I this is I always play Eisen. Eisen is the the big big giant robot. He's bigger than the other ones. Um, I just I, I kind of have an affinity for him. So like this is Eisen, and he's you know bigger than all the other ones. So like, here I'll just pick up the other robot and you can kind of see how he's bigger than the other ones and Aizen is known to be just big a big giant brawler uh you know he, he's kind of slow uh but if he gets a hold of you he can he can tear you apart and so I like these three abilities because they kind of chain off of each other and I'm not going to show you everything, but it's like Iron Fusion Stage 1, and then if you activate that, then you can get to Iron Fusion Stage 2, and then finally you get to Iron Fusion Stage 3. And so, like, he gets to, like, slowly, like, take less damage, and then he's doing more damage, and then he's doing even more damage, you know, because he's just, like, and so you can actually, you know, of course, picture that in an anime or whatever, you know, Iron Fusion Stage 2, you know, things like that, which, you know, of you're going to be saying stuff like that when you play this game and making a uh, laser noises and crumbling building noises as well but anyway so you pick those and each one of the robots has several different um, options available to them I'm not going to go through each one but you know you, just so you know that you can mix and match and come up with your playing style so each pilot has uh, three pilot abilities that you get to pick one um, I've already placed my pilot ability for Takashi Kato because uh, you know Aizen's more of a brawler, so I picked the one that says, um, born to fight, your melee attacks inflict damage plus one, which obviously is good, a good mix, you know, if you will, for that. But, as I said, there are, th you know, three cards each for every one of the pilots, and so you can kind of pick which one you want as far as that goes. Now, also, you have to get to pick the cards that you're going to have access to when you fight. Now, and you have a choice between... Uh, cards that are for the robot that you're picking and also pilot cards and you get a total of 16 one of those 16 has to be one of your robots i gotta find aizen's uh which is one of aizen so you can see what they're they're the like their ultimate power cards if you will or, i'm sorry ultimate technique so and here's like you get three of those and so i've already picked one but so these are like the big bad attacks that the or, or abilities uh, that they have here i'll show you uh aizen's here here so the aizen uh, blitz knuckle <laughs> so uh it's a big giant thing that it's going to have a big giant attack it gets five attack dice it can possibly do eight damage um and then also inflicts a fire a panic and a power surge uh to the opponent uh, if if it succeeds so it's you know obviously a big huge thing and you can see it's a melee attack which has a range of one and you know so and costs 20 spirit to pull off so you got to be in a perfect position to do that because Obviously, we're going to be gaining our spirit a little bit slower with Takashi Kato because he only gets uh, four hearts, but I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit there. But you'll be picking all of those cards, and every one of these cards, uh, well, not every one of them, a lot of the cards, like here, I'll show you a card that doesn't have it, um, a lot of cards have this little cooldown here, which has like a one or a two or a three, and when you use them, uh, you'll be placing them at the bottom of your 
combination. Here, I'll just pick this one up so you don't have to. And so you have this, and on the bottom, that's a one, two, or three, like so. And you'll be, when you play these cards, you play them onto that spot that's on the bottom of your thing. So like the ones would go there. At the end of your turn, you slide everything over to the right. So the things that were on three will go to two, the things on two go to one, and one go back, and then they get back into your hand. And so then you have access to them and you can use their abilities. So you can, so this one starts off at the beginning of the game in that spot that's on the one. And I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna scroll it down just a little bit so you can see it. I don't like doing this, but I'm gonna do it real quick. So you can see, I have my level three, my level two, and my level one. And so those are the three, and so I put those there at the beginning after I've, you know, put uh, my, combined my deck, and I, those are the cards that I'm going to have access to. But cards like this, like the, the Schneller Schlag, it's a, a pretty basic attack, but I'm always going to have access to it. It's like, oh, it's got a range of one, it does, you know, I get to roll one die, and if it's successful, it does one damage and just it, you know the special rules inflict damage you know, so it isn't uh, going to be a big hardcore attack it, but it is something that I'm always going to have access to it's always going to be in my hand and so if I need it uh, I can go ahead and activate it all right so combat obviously is at the core of the game when two robots are next to each other or far away from each other or whatever and you you're able to then uh, punch them your or shoot your lasers at them or what have you the the tenant of the game is going to be you're going to have attack dice and then the player is either going to um, use another attack to counter attack uh, what you're doing so like if you play a card like you have to pay um, the the like the, the cost of the card to use it. Um, you do that by, by using up your fighting spirit. You declare which attack you're gonna do to somebody else. If they have like an instant card that allows them to affect the situation, which is basically a reaction card, or if they have a, uh, uh, if, they, if they have like a counter attack, they can then play that card as well. Or if they don't want to, then they can just say, I'm going to defend. Now, there's a lot of different variables that go on here, but the basic core of the of the game is that if you have like say three three dice and you're going to attack and like let's say the other person's defending and they're rolling you know three dice to defend, what's going to happen is each person's going to roll and then if you uh, you you tie uh, like the the die results, you remove the uh, the dice uh, that that tie unless the other person counterattacked. So here, I'll show you. So let's just say we got, they're just using two defense dice and we're rolling three attack dice. So you roll three attack dice, a 10, three, and two, and then you roll these two attack dice and I get a 10 and a one. So what happens is, is the 10 and the 10 are removed. They're, they're gone because they tied. And then now you're going to compare those dice to each other. Well, the one, doesn't tie any and the one isn't higher than the three and two so the three and the two are going to be successes and then you're going to actually inflict your damage and you're going to take your your combat attack that's going to work if you rolled like a six the six would win because it was higher than both of the other ones if you had rolled a three the three would match the three and you take those off and then the two would be left and the two would still be a success. But some abilities, not all of them, but some abilities do actually matter the number of successes and then they can do other extra things like doing extra damage and so forth. So the number of successes actually matter. Now, the same situation, if I had three attack dice and the other person was counterattacking and had two attack dice, you'd roll these dice and let me just see, I'm probably not gonna get any doubles here, but the interesting thing here is, okay, so let's say, in this situation with a three and a two, the seven's going to win, you know, and so that situation is pretty simple to figure out. However, if we had rolled a seven, and let's say like a four, let me find my four, what would happen is, is that the seven and the four would match on a counterattack, remember this is a counterattack, would match those two, these two dice get removed, but the counterattack dice get to stay and still get to effect. And so in this case, the seven would actually win and be ahead, and you but you'd only have technically one success. But you still, your counterattack would work, and then you'd be able to do damage. Now, it's important to note that when you're doing all of your attacks and everything like that, you're allowed to do as many as you want, as long as you have cards that you play, and you can put them down. But remember, the cards go down uh, into your cooldown area uh, when they're using them. 
Uh, now the cool thing about the cooldown area is a lot of other things that can happen to your 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 robot, like being set on fire and things like that, also will go down to the cooldown area. So let me just, I apologize again, so let me just go down. So like, if you were set on fire, you know, because of an attack or a building exploded or whatever, so it says fire inflicts one damage uh, during cooldown, which is a, a part of the phase. And so if you had a fire and you're saying, and, and you're instructed to put fire on there, that actually travels down as well, so you stay on fire. Now, there's ways to put that out. If, if like, a, a, a spot gets flooded out with water or what have you, you can then you know, get the fire put out earlier. But that's also something really cool, how that works as well. It's like an, it's like an effect uh, that you carry with you as you go through. Uh, and just so it's it you know it just adds to the uh, the, the dynamic aspect of, of the combat arena. All right, so let's go ahead and focus back up here quick. And I'm going to just, one last thing, and then before I talk about my final thoughts and why I really enjoyed this, um, as I said, it's a dy dynamic battle arena where these buildings are going to get smashed. So if you have an attack that, like, and there's plenty of attacks that do this that, that will allow you to push people around and, and, and like, you know, or pull, pull them to you or what have you, um, you can... Uh, you know, push people into uh, the buildings and then and then actually like affect them even even more. So, for example, let's go ahead and put uh, our little dude here and our dude here. And Eisen uh, goes this uh, knuckle duster whirlwind. And so, like you can see, it ha it's a melee, so it has to be within one. Uh, it, you get to roll three attack dice. It has a cooldown of three and it has two damage. And it says inflict damage if successful. Uh, push your opponent one one and move to a hex adjacent to your opponent per success. So what will happen? So if you succeeded with that attack and you did damage. What you can do then is push them. And so what's going to happen is they're going to smash into this, this skyscraper right there. So you're ah, you know, King of Robo! And so then you remove the structure. And then to determine what happens, you're going to draw one of these cards off the Gigaroba impact cards. And these are going to do certain things. So let's just take the top card and see what it says here. So it says collision, explosion. Uh, as the structure crumbles beneath your robot's weight, uh, something detonates, sending a massive shockwave in all directions. You receive one damage, and then it creates rubble. So important to note, that was a skyscraper. Oh, and then remember, you get to follow him because of the attack. But it was a skyscraper, so it was like a big building. So you're going to double whatever damage that takes. So then the robot would take two damage instead of one. And then it creates a rubble token. So rubble is just this. And it's uh, rubble. It's two movement uh, to enter or exit. Uh, and like and you know, everybody, as I said before, all, all of them have a speed rating. Like Eisen has a speed of four. He's kind of kind of slow, but like I said, once he gets a hold of you, uh, he can really do some damage. And then you go ahead and place that in the hex. And so now that place is going to maybe have rubble. It's going to have defense plus one if you happen to be in that. And so you can defend and add an extra die uh, to your defensive roll. Uh, other things that you can do. Uh, are, let me just show you a couple other other uh, possibilities you have. Um, you have like a damaged power source. Uh, blinding arcs of electricity erupt from the building's generator, uh, damaging your sensors. You receive two damage and a power surge. And then it creates an arc hazard and all adjacent hexes receive one power surge. And so power surge is yet another effect that you are going to add to your cooldown. And so when you add uh, that to it's like it moves in place of one card during the cooldown phase. So it actually then slows down like one of your things that normally would move down. You'd move this token instead. So uh, that's never a good thing because obviously you want to get more cards into your hand. You can also get floods that, that cause. Um, and so, of course, in that arc hazard, you have a. You have an arc hazard uh, token as well that you put on that spot. Um, you can have a flood in an area, which causes water to be in it, as I said. Uh, flood is three movement to enter and exit. Uh, you remove a fire from cooldown meter, and then remove fire from one cooldown slot or reduce the cooldown of all cards in your cooldown meter by one, because like the flood is cooling you off, you know, because you're overheating or whatever. And of course, then you can also have, you know, an inferno, because it's on fire. And so then you receive a fire token, and so on and so forth. So there's other things like that as well. Um, that, that And that actually, uh, it's very rare, especially with a four-player game, that any of the buildings are still standing uh, towards the end because of all the impact cards that you're drawing uh, as you're duking it out. 
So depending upon if you're playing teams or all, a brawl for all, uh, basically you are bashing the other opponent, your opponents uh, into submission. If you reduce their armor down to zero, uh, then they are destroyed. Um, I, yeah, I do apologize. I realize I probably didn't go through an exact like turn or whatever, if you will, like like each process. So just just quickly to go over uh, what you do on your turn or how it goes is um, the first thing you're gonna do is that if you have any effects that are affecting you a turn, like you're on fire or whatever, uh, things like that, uh, then you're gonna go ahead and activate those first, you know, so you can show that like um, the ongoing things that are happening to you uh, affect you right away at the beginning of your turn. The second thing you do is you go through upkeep. Um, you either gain your pilot's heart value as fighting spirit or their power value and power tokens. And then you adjust those tracks, um, and or you know, to if depending on which one you pick, uh, then you go strict, strictly into combat. And so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to move around uh, as uh, according to whatever your speed value is. If you do like climb elevation, uh, which you can go on top of buildings, whatever the elevation of that building is, you add that to the movement. So if you're moving one and up one level like so, that's a two movement points. To go up on top of a big one, you know, from the other side, that is going to be uh, two movements, so you actually, obviously, then would be, uh, the, the elevation would add two, so it'd be three. You can, you know, because of the elevation, if you're on the same elevation, you can go like, that would be just one movement point. To go from here to here, uh, that would be two. You know, so you, you can use them as stepping stones and climbing and, and what have you. Uh, then, after you get done with your movement, um, you can then, uh, you can pay, like, your instant or activate robot abilities, um, and, like, and other people can actually then, if they have instants that they can uh, play in return, uh, they can do those as well. Then you go ahead and play your attack cards. They possibly counterattack. Uh, if you are behind cover, you do cover effects do um, come into effect, like, so as far as, like, buildings in between, so you have to take that into account as well. Um, then once you go ahead and do your attacks, you resolve the collisions, if there are any, with like the, the different uh, buildings or whatever, and then you go into your resolution. So if you are down to zero armor, uh, you're done because of a counterattack, or maybe you ran into a building and took some damage, and then uh, you just keep playing until one, one side, if it's a team game, is destroyed, or until you're the last robot standing. So... There you go. Uh, it is a ton of fun. Uh, it is fast paced. It isn't like uh, everybody sits there and has like a thousand questions or or wonderments uh, when their turn comes. Uh, the, the the cards are very descriptive and very straightforward. Um, the the combat mechanism of the dice and the tying is something that I, I hadn't played before, uh, which I found to be very uh, interesting and very innovative. Um, there's probably other games out there that do it, but I hadn't played one yet, so I found that to be uh, very enjoyable. Uh, so and plus it's giant robots uh, uh, beating the tar out of each other. So uh, what's not to like? But I'll talk all about that and more uh, in my final thoughts. All right, there you go. Uh, you should have, like I said, a really good overview of the rules and how Giga Robo is played. I do strongly suggest that the Kickstarter page has an excellent, uh, like, full uh, game uh, uh, played type of situation showing you every step of the way and, like, showing them the different cards and how the effects work as a sample. And I strongly suggest that if you're interested and want to take a look into a deeper dive uh, into the rule set, uh, go ahead and check that out. But um, regardless, like I said, uh, I knew that I was going to dig this game. I mean, unless the rules, like, completely and totally fell apart, I, I was pretty positive I was going to enjoy myself. I've always been a fan of the big giant robot with a little dude inside uh, fighting it out. I was a big uh, battle mech, battle tech player uh, in junior high and also in uh, in high school. I've even played a little bit. I mean, I, I played Mech Warrior actually uh, in my twenties. We had a pretty good campaign for Mech Warrior for there for a while. Um, but uh, I just like I said, I, I, I knew I was going to take this. I knew it was going to be fun. Um, it, it, like I said, as long as the rules held up, and the rules held up amazingly well. Uh, the, everything about the rules is not only like tactical and strategic i really love the cooldown process of getting those cards back in your hand and then playing them and as long as you have that fighting spirit available you can just play as many as you want um there is one thing that i didn't touch on basically because aizen isn't like the best uh person but there are cards that have a counter on them uh that allow you to actually like play uh several cards in succession i'll see if i can find one here while i'm talking but what happens is is that then you're allowed to chain attacks 
attacks together. And when you chain attacks together, then you're actually able to add more power to the attack. We need you to roll more dice. And then you can add, like, in, so that, that helps out a lot, you know. And, you, and there's nothing more satisfying than when, like, you are... Uh, placing your your cards down uh, for your attack, and you keep chaining things together into a combo. It's something very very enjoyable. Uh, but regardless, so as I said, the combat itself is is very very straightforward, and like each one of these cards, um, just you know, even even cards with like a fair amount of text in the bottom, um, it, it does a really good job of explaining to you how those are done and how those work. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, oh here, here's one with a combo. You probably won't be able to see it, but there's like that little tiny like die there with like a chain on it. So like you can put combos together. But that's also the also cool thing about it is that they've actually taken the different robots and they've actually made it a point to make it so they like have their own kind of play style, and and the and the pilots themselves also have their own style as well that, that kind of will feed into that. Like you know, like I, I showed you, like the, when I had uh, my buddy here, uh, Takasha, uh, like his his bonus to melee damage, you know, and so like that always worked really well with Eisen for me because you know he's in the thick of it and he's just brutalizing people with his fists because he's the big bad big robot on the street and so and and as i said also you're gonna find yourself um you know using uh you know anime language or whatever if you will um or as my my buddy jason still calls it japanimation which i don't know <sighs> anyway regardless um you know it's it's one of those things where uh the immersion into the theme and the immersion of being the the pilot of that giant robot really really comes through with both the the very very cool artwork of uh, the dynamic uh board that you're playing on and also just the the highly descriptive uh attacks that you have i mean there's like things with like suplexes and things like that so you can think of like picking up a robot and smashing him back to the ground and and going through those actions and of course then of course if you can get them next to a building you get to smash them straight through that building and then i can picture uh that that anime in my mind of this robot spinning through multiple skyscrapers as they as it crumbles down around them, if you will. Um, ultimately, uh, if you are like me and you like the idea of giant robots punching each other or shooting lasers or what have you, um, it's going to be something that you're going to probably like. Uh, you, if you're like a, a big, deep Euro strategy lover, obviously this isn't going to be your, your, your cup of soup, if you will. Uh, but if you like games with a lot of chaos, a lot of strategic and tactical choices, and you like that theme, uh, I think this is going to be a surefire winner for you. So if you have any questions about Giga Robo, uh, ask away. I'll try to answer those, as always, to the best of my ability. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, I'm the Undead Viking, and I'm telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.